What a whirlwind this has been. So much change and information and growth coming at us with AI technology. This year really took off with ChatGPT. And then as that started rolling along, we saw AI art generation and all of our favorite tools now having AI built in. I got caught up in the ChatGPT prompts and sharing those on YouTube because those have been your favorite videos. Now, what I'd like to do is show you how I'm incorporating some of these AI tools into my daily blogging business. I am a full-time blogger. All of my income comes from blogging on written word, my video blogs on YouTube, and on building courses. So that's my main strategy. So every day I get up and all day long I create content. And these are the tools that I use, and I'm gonna show you exactly how I get my ideas for what to blog about, and then how I take one of those blogs and spin it out into a bunch of other blogs, basically creating a topic cluster, and the tools that I use in that process. So yes, I'm gonna bring up ChatGPT. I'm gonna show you how I use it in a, with, in a Chrome extension so that it's running along every, every tab that I use. I'm gonna incorporate uh, Surfer SEO, which I'm now doing my article optimization to help it rank on Google and using AI writers in there. And I may bring in SEMrush, which is where I do my keyword research. The other main tool that I use in all of this is Canva for my images. So I'm gonna put a link to all the tools that I use below. Also gonna timestamp this video because this is gonna be a long one. I may dice it up for you, but you can skip around, find what you like and leave the rest, all right? So let's go ahead and I'm gonna bring myself right on the screen here with you guys. And then I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. Perfect. Okay, now what we're going to do is I'm going to show you something very interesting. And we're going to actually start with YouTube. The screen you're looking at now is Surfer SEO. I'm going to come back to that. I now have started uh, blogging on a third party platform along with my WordPress. Okay, and that I'm going to show it to you here. And you may see that now coming up as I'm as I'm working on this again. I've kind of dabbled back and forth with Medium. Medium is a blog platform that allows you to go in here and write articles, okay? When you write articles, you can actually get paid, make money on these articles when people watch them. I'm not gonna get into all of that today. But what I do wanna show you is I'm gonna go ahead and go to my profile here and I'll give you an example. If I was just starting blogging, and I really didn't have a super great understanding of WordPress, and maybe I'm intimidated by a lot of these plugins and things that you do, this platform is a great place just to start blogging, okay? So I wanted to throw that out there. But one of the reasons why I do it is because I actually make money on the blog. That's one thing. They actually pay the writers a, a sort of a little, uh, I don't know what, you, what they call it, but it's part of their partner program, so creator fund, if you will. And depending on how many views you get and who it is that's watching it, you can make money. So for example, last month I made $300 on, um, on, on Medium and this month I'm, I'm trending $600. So it'll be very interesting to watch this evolution because I just got back on here. The niche that you choose, all of that makes a difference. But also one of the reasons why I'm using this, and this is important for today's video, is that I'm creating backlinks from uh, this website to my own website, which can help Google get a better understanding of what your website is about and help establish authority on a particular topic. So you can see here, wherever I've underlined, these are links that go from Medium back to my own website. So here where I mention monetization strategies, if they were to click that, and it were open and it was open, here's an article all about monetization strategies. Or it might also link to one of my affiliate products because as a full-time blogger, I do earn six figures in affiliate income, which basically means when I talk about a tool or something that I use, I have an affiliate relationship, somebody clicks on it, if they make a qualified purchase, I benefit, but it doesn't cost them anything extra. And I always disclose that all over the place. But anyway, that's another benefit of why I'm blogging on this platform. So it drives affiliate offers. It helps build authority through those backlinks. 
In addition, it helps drive traffic to my regular blog, okay? So if you have a blog already, this might be something that you want to add. And I do not anymore put the same things on Medium that I put on my own blog because I have found another strategy that I think works a little bit better, which I'm going to show you. You can cross, cross your articles. But in this particular case, I don't because I've come up with a new strategy. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to show you, there's other strategies that I do to get ideas for blogs, but today I'm going to focus on one specific strategy, and that's this one. What I do every single morning is I go to YouTube, and I find a video that I didn't create, but that my audience would appreciate. It's almost like doing a third-party interview or a case study. Now, we cannot use every video. There are certain videos that the creator has uploaded that allow us to embed it on a third-party site. Those are the ones we're going to use. I don't change their video. I don't chop up their video. I don't touch their video. I own, And the link is live, so they get the props for that video. Some creators don't like that, so they take their... Uh, they take their video where it can't be embedded. I'm not sure why they wouldn't like that because it's promo for them and it's traffic for them. However, that that's what I'm doing. Okay, now I use that video to share a concept with my audience that I might not actually be doing myself. Okay, and I'm going to show you the exact process of that. Then what I do is I use ChatGPT and a, a, a Chrome extension where the prompt is already saved to create an article. Then I go into the article and I optimize it afterwards. And if I think there's some spin-off topics, such as creating a topic cluster, and I'll explain what that is, then I might go into SEMrush to look up some keyword data on it, and I might use Surfer SEO to write the article, okay? So the inspiration comes from the video. I take the video, I use ChatGPT and a Chrome extension to create an article that goes on Medium. Then I optimize Medium to drive traffic back to my website, to my affiliate offers, and to find inspiration for more articles, okay? So that's the concept of today. This isn't the only way I find ideas, but this is an incredible one. And even if you decide using somebody else's video and posting on Medium is not for me, you can still use the videos for inspiration and ideas, okay? And I'm going to show you how we do each one of these steps right now. So first step in all of this is going to YouTube and finding topics that you want to write about. So the first step is think about your audience. Who is your audience? Now, in my particular case, we're, I'm just going to stick with my, what I do, okay? We're going to go with what I do. I run a digital marketing blog and I teach people right now. My whole medium channel is about making money online. Okay. This whole, I'll put a link below. This whole thing is about making money online. So I share how other people besides myself are making money online. I make money online through affiliate marketing, uh, through course sales and through real estate sales, because I also have a real estate company. Those are my uh, primary methods. I have like seven streams all together in there. But other people are making a ton of money on print on demand and drop shipping and Etsy sales and and uh, uh, eBooks on, on Amazon and merch and all those different things. I might write about somebody making money on YouTube, various things like that. So I'm gonna stick with my concept, which is making money, okay? So what I've done is I've gone into my subscriptions and I have found a whole bunch of people that make videos on making money, okay? Now, these people might be sharing their own stories. They might be sharing a third-party story as well. It really doesn't matter as long as I get the results. Now, every day when I log into YouTube, my home screen or my For You page or whatever we're calling this now on YouTube um, is going to be a combination of the videos that I watch the most and suggested videos based on the other videos that I'm watching. And this is where I often find some really cool new channels and things that I haven't subscribed to yet because this is making suggestions that I have not subscribed to. If I want to just go to my subscriptions, then I can click on subscriptions and I can just go down here and see what my favorite creators are posting okay 
So let's just do that for now. Let's just go say, let me, let me pretend, let me pretend that we haven't found any videos yet. You're brand new. You're just starting this. You're going to go up here to the search bar and you're going to type something in related to your niche. Okay. So my niche is make money online, right? So I might do something like that and then I can scroll and see who's coming up in this niche. So here's a first, oh, here's one I haven't done yet. This is a great example. Make $75 every 30 minutes typing CAPTCHAs, make money online. Now here's what I look for. I look for captivating thumbnails because that thumbnail is going to show up on my blog. Two, I'm going to look for, uh, I'm going to look for under 20 minute video, under 20 minute. And the reason for this is because the way this, uh, the, the YouTube extension that I use transcribes the script, it'll cut off. And then I have to divide it into multiples and I don't want to do that. And besides, I don't want this to be too lengthy because I'm going to expand on it myself. I just kind of want a simple synopsis of what this person's doing, what this creator is doing, and then I'm going to build onto that. And I'll show you how I, how I do that. If you want to, up here, there's things called filters, okay? Now, what I'll usually do is when I'm looking at videos, I will put in um, four to 20 minutes is the range of the video that I want to look at. And I also like to look at videos that were made this year. Okay, that's another thing that I do. Or you can sort it by newest down. You can also sort it by most views. So you know that these are popular videos because I want to choose a popular topic. I want to choose something people are really captivated by for my blog. If that video did well and got a lot of views, potentially it could also do well on a blog. Okay, so we're going to go with this one. This is a great example. Make $75 every 30 minutes. So this is what it looks like. I'm going to click on the video. You know those websites that have those weird little boxes? I do not have to make the whole video, okay? What I do want to make sure of is that this has the license that allows me to share it and embed it. So right now I'm going to click on share and I'm going to go to embed. So as long as you're seeing this embed code, you're going to be able to post that on Medium or your WordPress blog or wherever you're blogging. And it would look something like this. I'm going to go to write. I'm just going to show you what this video does. I'm going to click share and copy. I'm grabbing the link to the video. Then I'm going to paste it right here and I'm going to hit enter. If there is a license to share it, it will show up in your blog. If not, it'll be in, it'll say this video's not, I can't remember what it says. This video has been removed or this video. Anyway, it, it, it doesn't work. Okay. And you'll be able to see it. I can't remember what the error message is. So this creator has uploaded their video with the rights for somebody else to embed it. Okay. Again, that doesn't mean I can chop it up. It doesn't mean I can take a bunch of their stuff. It doesn't mean I'm going to copy anything. Literally I'm going to use this video for inspiration. I'm going to give them the credit for it, credit for it, keep their link live. They get the traffic, but I'm going to build onto it for the users. Okay. So it's kind of like taking an excerpt of a, of another article or something and you're building your thoughts and patterns around it. So I'll show you exactly how I do this. So in my case, my prompt is go, chat GPT prompt is going to help me create an article that is a step by step process. So it basically explains what the concept is, how to do it. It creates a little author bio about me. It creates a list of resources. But then I go in afterwards and I massage it and I expand upon it and I look at it and I say, did this really accomplish the goal? Because overall, it's still just a, a, an AI prompt. I want to elaborate on it. And I'm going to show you how I use the AI to do that. Okay. So here's how it works. We've got our video. We know we have the permission now to use the video. So I'm going to go in here and there is, I have a Chrome extension here called, it is called, it's glasp.co. I'm going to put the link in the description below, YouTube-summary. But if you go to Chrome, your Chrome store, I'm going to show you where else to get it. So right now, this is free. I have no idea if that'll change later. Go to the Chrome web store, and you can just type in here, YouTube summary. Either way, this is what you want. Okay? And then, um, blah, 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 that's not it. It is called 
Sorry about that. Did they change the name of it? It is called YouTube Summary with Chat GPT. Okay, I don't know why I can't find it on the Chrome store. Maybe I'll look it up after the fact and see if I can find it. Oh, more extensions. There it is. Sorry about that. Right here. YouTube Summary with Chat GPT and Claude. Okay. So now it works with ChatGPT and Claude. So that's what you want to download for the purpose of this video. Okay, again, it's free. If you're not using a Chrome extension, you can use any video transcript software to transcribe the script. Um, you also can use the YouTube version of the transcript, but then you'll need to go into ChatGPT and run the prompt I'm going to put in there manually. Okay. I'm always revising my prompt a little bit. So you may see it one way and then may maybe later it gets a little bit more elaborate. I'm always massaging those prompts and playing with them. But here's what it looks like. So all I do is here's the video. I've already got the Chrome extension set. Now I'm going to click on this little chat GPT wheel. That's going to open chat GPT in a new tab or a new window. So I'm going to click it and you're going to see it happen. There it goes. It's right here now and it's running. Now, because I have this all set up in my Chrome extension, I already have a default prompt. And here's my prompt. Don't get overwhelmed, but listen. Use markdown format. That is what makes the headers and subheaders show up in your article. Write an article in the tone of Seth Godin. You're going to put whatever tone you want. You can even analyze your own writing and put it in your tone. Write a meta description without labeling it a meta description. Create a compelling introduction to the article and do not label it, meaning do not call it introduction. Bold the target keyword. Explain what the reader will learn in the comprehensive guide. List the takeaways and elaborate. That's going to be the takeaways from the video. Introduce the video. Explain the business model. Pretend you are an expert in this topic and list the step-by-step -step process with examples. List the resource needed to complete the step-by-step, -step, make a frequently asked questions, include a bio for Lori Ballin content creator. Whew, I know, that's a lot. Okay, now here's how I did mine. In When you're using your Chrome extensions, after you install that Chrome extension, you can edit your Chrome extensions. And I'm going to go up here. Let's see. My Chrome, right here, that little puzzle piece. So that little puzzle piece will access your Chrome extensions in your uh, toolbar there. Go down here to manage extensions, then go find your YouTube summary. Here it is right here, YouTube summary with ChatGPT and Claude. Go to details. Okay, this is where all this, the magic happens. Right here where it says, Let's see, let me go to, let me edit it. Hold on, I'm in the wrong spot. So details, I haven't edited this in a little while, so I have to remember where I did this at. Okay, site settings, I think it's site settings. Okay, I found it. It's not site settings. It is right down here. We're going to go to extension options. Okay. Extension options. And we're going to click the, this little arrow. Now you can choose the model that you want to use. If you're using 3.5, the free version, keep it at 3.5. If you want to use ChatGPT4, you can do that. If you want to use ChatGPT4 with your plugins, you can do that. Okay, so you can play with this and see which one works for you, works best for you. I'll just put it on four for now as an example. If you want it to use your plugins like Run the Web or bring in other articles and things like that, but it can it can get clunky if you have too much of that going on. Now here's where here's the magic. I said prompt for the summary. So here you go. Use markdown format. Write an article in the tone of Seth Godin. Write a meta description without labeling it meta description. I'll give you a link below to access the prompt. And then you'll just put in your information in there if you want to use this exact prompt. 
And then when I find something is a little wonky or I find a way to improve it, I'll go in here and just edit that prompt summary, okay? Now, you can also choose for longer video articles, do you want it to be equally sized chunks or do you want it to be start to, to limit? I keep it on equally sized chunks. I'm not gonna get into that too much today, but you can see that. And you can play around with this from there, but that's how I have my setup, okay? Now that we have that process done, this is gonna make everything so easy. We clicked one button and because that's all set up, look what happens now at the bottom of this prompt. It has now created our entire article for us. Now, if you want, you can take that article as is and you can move it over to um, Medium and start working with it, or you can start working with it more in within ChatGPT, but I'm gonna show you the exact way I do it, okay? I go back and forth now between ChatGPT and Medium to get this article the way I want it to be. Now, I've, I'm sure that I could do some prompt improvements to get some meteor information, but I also kind of like working with it myself because that's where I get all the inspiration from. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna open Medium, and as you can see here, we're in a new article. Let me show, show you how I did that again. So I go to Medium, all right, and I'm just gonna go to Write, and this is where I'm gonna write a new story, okay? First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pick a new title. I do not want to use that creator's title. That to me feels wrong, but I'm going to use it as an inspiration. So his title is make $75 every 30 minutes typing captions. Now my prompt already gave me some, oh, this one didn't give me title ideas. So here's what I do. I'm going to take that title and watch this prompt. Okay. Over here, I have a little sidebar. This sidebar is another free Chrome extension. What that sidebar allows me to do is use ChatGPT anywhere on any tab. I could be on Facebook, I could be doing emails, I could be doing all kinds of things, and I always have ChatGPT right here at the side without having to go back in here, although I might sometimes go back here. And the reason why, so here I might start a new prompt, but this sidebar does not know the entire context of the article like this chat GPT version does yet. So sometimes I'll go back to it. I'll, I'll watch how I do this so that you get a better under, understanding. Okay, so first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna say, give me 10 clickbait. I'm gonna explain that in a second. It's not really clickbait, but get, give me click 10 clickbait versions of this title. Okay, now it's gonna give me 10 versions of that title. So the first one, earn $75 in just half, half an hour by typing CAPTCHAs. You won't believe how easy it is, okay? The reason I use the word clickbait is not because I'm not gonna give them what they asked for. I know clickbait has a bad uh, message about it where people think you're, you're not giving them what what you're, we are going to give them that. But when I use the word clickbait as an adjective for to chat GPT, it, it knows how to write a more compelling click worthy article. But if I just say click worthy, it doesn't do it. So I use the word clickbait as an adjective because it, it understands now to use urgency and to use scarcity and, and emotion and all of those things in those titles. Okay. So earn $75 in just half an hour by typing CAPTCHAs. You won't believe how easy it is. Second one, make money online. How to earn $75 every 30 minutes by typing CAPTCHAs. Third one, unleash your earning potential. Get paid. Okay, so we're using the same concept. It's just kind of moving things around, putting adjectives, that kind of thing. So I'm going to go with this one here. Make money online. And the reason I'm doing that is I like that keyword in the front of the title on this particular one. I haven't done that one in a while. So I'm going to paste that title right there. Make money online, how to earn $75 every 30 minutes by typing CAPTCHAs. Okay. Next, take a look at this intro. It says, unlock the secret to making money online by solving CAPTCHAs. Yes, those annoying little boxes that ask you to prove you're not a robot. In this comprehensive guide, you'll discover how to turn those CAPTCHAs into cash. We'll delve into the business model, list the resources you need, and even introduce a video that walks you through the process. Ready to transform your free time into a revenue revenue stream? Let's dive in. So when I found that the tone of Seth Godin 
to me is conversational. It's friendly. It talks like a marketer. It's high energy. It fits my tone. It fits what I want. You go take a look at if you're in the medical field, you might want to go look at a real popular, you know, if you're doing keto and people follow the most popular keto coaches. You might want to try it in one of their vo voices. You might want to use something like Oprah Winfrey or Maya Angelou if you want it to be soft and flowery and inspirational. You can put in whatever tone you want. You could just say expert. You could say teacher. Play with those. I played with them and played with them, played with them until I found the one I like. And for me, I like Seth Godin. Okay. It's funny. If you put in like Gary Vaynerchuk, it gets really... Um, uh, I want to call it bro. <laughs> I don't know why. That's just a word that's coming to my mind. So you play with what fits you the best. Okay. And then we've got what you'll learn. And it talks about what you're going to learn here. Then we're going to do get a video introduction. So what I, what I usually do right here is I just take this whole thing. I'm not going to use it all and I'm going to chop it up and add to it, but it helps me to just go ahead and put it all in medium and start working from there. Okay. So we got our intro here. Now on, uh, I've got a spell check running. This is Grammarly. I'll try to remember to put that in the description below. So it will, it will suggest spelling fixes. It will suggest making sentences shorter, things like that. So it's, so where I have, yes, those annoying little boxes that ask Grammarly is saying little boxes ask you, that doesn't sound right. So I'm going to click dismiss. Okay. Um, in when I'm typing on medium, I also have to include an image. Okay. So I might do that after the fact. So we'll just keep rolling right now. So now we've got what you'll learn and then we've got the video introduction. Now this part's tricky. Sometimes, uh, chat GPT will get the creator's name wrong. It won't understand who made the video. And this, if the channel name is the same as the if the channel name is the person's name, that makes it easier. If they introduce themselves in the video, that makes it, it that makes it more helpful. But you got to cross check it because sometimes it'll get it wrong and sometimes it'll spell it wrong. So in this particular case, it says Ryan Hildreth. So let's take a look. So before we get to the nitty gritty, check out this video by Ryan. See how it's spelled? Did I just do that? I might have copied that wrong. I thought it looked like it was right the first time. Let me see. Nope. See, see it's wrong. So I'm going to fix that and I'm just going to say Ryan Hildreth and I, it won't let me copy it. So let me click it. Boom, 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 and boom. These are all. Okay. So I'm going to, I want to make sure that Ryan gets the proper props here and you don't have to introduce the video. You could just include the video and then say, I watched this great video and here's the, here's the concept, you know, if you don't want to, but if I can and it makes sense to do so, then I will. And then it says founder and CEO of cashflowchannels.com. Is that true? Sometimes ChatGPT hallucinates. So I might go over here and look at his about page and it says cashflow channels are the best cashflowchannels.com. So he is, it is a member chat. That is correct information. Okay. So I might just fix that. So it looks like a URL. I also could put the link, make that a live link if I want to, don't have to. It's up to you. I'm putting in a link already to the video, but if I want to give him extra props, I could also link to his website. And how I would do that is I would just click on it and come up here. Now, if you are an affiliate marketer and you make money by promoting other people's stuff, you might want to scroll down and see if he has an affiliate program or Google it before you put the link in there. That's just a little side note. Okay. But I don't. So I'm right now I'm just going to put that in there. Do not have a relationship with him yet. Okay, and it says he'll walk you through the steps to start earning money by solving captures. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and give it a thumbs up. So we're giving him some props. We're saying subscribe. Okay, so now I need to go ahead and get that video. You know those websites. So I'm going to go to share, copy, and I'm going to paste it right here underneath it. And then I'm going to hit enter. Now that YouTube video will be live right there. Perfect. That's what I want. Now you can do this on your own blog too. Again, you don't have to use medium. You could do this on LinkedIn. You can do this on Facebook articles. You can do this on wherever you want. This is just an example of one platform. Okay. Now the business model, it says here, the business model is simple. Websites pay you to solve captchas. Why? Now it's suggesting that we get rid of the word because I'm going to keep it because by doing so you're helping them verify that users are human and are not bots. This is a win-win situation. Websites get the security they need and you get paid for a simple task. 
Now it goes into the step-by-step -step process, okay? Now I wish we had a little um, more introduction to the step-by-step -step process. It just kind of looks plain. So I might do something down here, going back to the full article and say, give me an introduction to the step-by-step -step process. You know what I could do? I could go back and revise my prompt where I say, give me a step-by-step -step process. I could put in there with an introduction. And then next time I would get a proper introduction under that space. So here you go. So if you're ready to turn those pesky captions into a revenue stream, uh, good on you. But before you start seeing dollar signs, there's a roadmap you need to follow. This step-by-step -step process is your treasure map, leading you from the X marks the spot of signing up to the buried treasure of your first payout. Isn't that great writing? I love it. And then I talk, okay, so I'm just going to go with that first one. And I'm going to go back to medium and I'm going to paste it right under that step-by-step -step process. Okay. So choose your platform. All right. Now this is where it gets interesting. So I might want to elaborate on this because if I was a beginner and I'm just learning about, the, which I am, I've never seen this before. I didn't know you get paid to turn captions into revenue stream. So this is new to me. I'm not going to understand what any of this means, right? So I might say something like, over here, I'm going to say, I'm going to put my name, I'm going to give it a little context. My article is about making money, what is it, um, by typing captures. Okay, I'm going to give it a little context because it's not, it's not reading this whole article like ChatGPT did that already wrote the article. Okay, it will start reading up once we start creating here. Now I'm going to tell it to elaborate on this step. Okay, so I'm going to put a little colon here. No, period. I'm going to say elaborate, and then I'm going to give it a colon, and I'm going to put it here. Now, make yourself a note. Elaborate is such a good prompt. It is such a good prompt. You can take any sentence, any quote, any stat, any anything, and say elaborate, and look what ChatGPT does. It's absolutely incredible. Now, I think I started to tell you about the sidebar and I, I did, I forgot to tell you. This sidebar is called, it's called Cider. I will put a link to that below too. Like I said, it's free, but they do have like some sort of upgraded version. I do have a referral link. And what does that give you? Um, I don't know. It gives us both rewards. So you're going to see it down here. Cider.ai. I'm going to put that below in the description. Okay. Love this. Love, love, love. So. Here's what it gave us. So it gave us, it elaborated, making money by typing catches, captures. We don't need that whole article. Okay, then it gives an introduction. And now here it says, choose your platform. That's where we're starting from because we already have all that intro. So we just want to choose the platform here. Okay, so I'm going to take it from here and I'm going to copy down. And I don't need resources. All I need is the platforms. One, two, three. Did it give us all? Okay, I see why, because it said resources needed. So we'll do that separately. And we're just going to paste this here. Okay, now I go in and clean it up. If you copy the whole thing off the copy tab, it'll it's cleaner. But I didn't want to take the whole thing, so I just kind of did a generic copy and paste. Let me show you what I mean. Let me get rid of that for a second. And then we'll just take the whole thing. So down here, we're going to click that copy and we're going to paste it right there. See how it copies cleaner when you do it that way? Okay, so we don't need all of it though. So I'm going to get rid of up here. We don't need any of that. First step in making money by typing captures is to choose a reliable and reputable platform. Here are three popular platforms you can consider. Okay, one, mega typers. Now, if you want to, you could change these into H3s. If you're using H2s and H3s, this would be an H2 uh, heading. And then you could make these H3s, especially if you're typing on like WordPress, I would probably make that like an H3, not the whole thing. But in this particular case, since it's on medium, I may not worry about all that. So I'm just gonna do this. Where did the number one go? Let me get the number one back. There it goes. So I might do this. So mega typers. Now, Here's what we have to think about. We want to make sure that we are writing for humans, optimizing for 
machines. Writing for humans, optimizing for machines. When we write for humans, we need to ask ourselves, how do I make this more helpful? How do I make this more helpful? This is the first time they're a beginner. They've never been on here before. How do I make this more helpful? Well, they're going to take a look at this and let's say they want to start making money with captchas. Mega typers is in here. If they're going to try to click on it. We need to put a link in there for them. Whether we have an affiliate or not, it's for the user, benefit the user. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here to Google and I'm going to type in mega typers or there's another way I can do it. This is another one of my favorite ways to use this sidebar. Right here, I'm going to type in mega typers. I'm going to hit enter. And then it's going to go search the web and it's going to pull us in link. Oh, it's got the wrong one though. That's not what we want. So this says mega typers, a well-known platform that offers capture typing services. Let me try this. Find the URL. There it is. See that? So mega typers, I'm going to double check it, see if it works. It works. I'm going to paste that right there. Now I'm going to show you, this is exactly how I get inspiration though, for more content for my website. What I'm going to ask myself now is I went out and got this link for mega typers. I'm now sending somebody off of medium to a third party platform. Is there an opportunity to create a blog post on my own website now that I send them to about mega typers, right? Or maybe it's time to create a blog on my website all about these CAPTCHA platforms, CAPTCHA typing services. So this is a brand new topic for me. I don't know anything about it. So this is exactly what I would do. I would now go over to SEMrush, which is um, already open. This is, this is SEMrush and I'm going to type in what did that say? CAPTCHA typing services. CAPTCHA typing services. This is what I would do if I have no idea about this content. Is it something people are searching? Okay, it came up with nothing. CAPTCHA typing services. Let's try CAPTCHA typing. There we go. CAPTCHA typing. CAPTCHA typing cash. How to earn money by typing CAPTCHAs. Now, this could be, I'm going to try it with just CAPTCHA and let me see something real quick. This could be a new trend. So there's not a lot of search data. It could be something that people just don't know about it, right? So it's probably going to grow over time. Or it could be something nobody cares about, nobody's searching as well. But what I'm going to do really quick, so I'm kind of looking, I'm scanning to see if there's anything here that talks about making money with CAPTCHA. Earnings. Let's go to earnings. How to make, how to earn money with CAPTCHA, 70, to 70, 70 monthly searches a month. Not a lot. Okay. Again, this could be trending. So if I wanted to, I could go over to Google trends and open Google trends or whatever trend tool I'm using and type it in and see if it's something that's starting to climb potentially. I also can click on this and look at a little more info on SEMrush and see if it has any information. So for me... This is not an obvious, yes, there's an opportunity. Let me go create an article about it, okay? Not an obvious one, but that doesn't mean it can't rank. So what I would do instead is after I write this article on Medium, I might go write a similar one using the same process and put it on my lauriballon.com website and see if, if, if Google picks it up if Google ranks it for making money writing CAPTCHAs. Then if it does, then I might elaborate and create a more comprehensive article and try to get it to write. Does that make sense? So if it's an obvious winner, I'm gonna start writing the article or I'm gonna put it on my next, or I'm gonna go order it inside Surfer. If it's a, I don't know yet, I'm gonna experiment and play with it a little bit. But, but after I finish this one, it'll be a, a next level thing, okay? Now I also could look up mega typers. So let's go over here. And I'm going to type in mega typers and let's take a look. Okay. Mega typers. Wow. So 1300 monthly searches, 43% keyword difficulty. I explain keyword difficulty in a lot of my other videos, but basically the keyword difficulty is, is how hard it's going to be to compete against that keyword. And they kind of use backlinks and authority and age domain and things in that scoring system. And I usually tell people whatever your authority domain score is on SEMrush, 
stay within that like 20 point bubble. So if you're at a 30 domain authority, I would say stay under 50 keyword difficulty. That's not a hard and fast rule. That's a, um, a correlation that I have found with rankings is that if we stay within there, we have a good chance of ranking. So, or it's also color coordinated. So for me, I like to stick with green, yellow, and orange. And I usually don't go for the reds unless I know I'm on one of my sites that has a higher domain authority, been around a lot longer, or I just know I have to cover that topic. The higher the keyword difficulty, the harder it's going to be to rank for that, for the competition. So mega typers have some opportunity here. Mega typers review. Maybe I want to go in and try it and review it, right? Or maybe I just... How about this one? Is mega typers legit? These are such popular search terms. All right. I like that one. Okay. So what I would do now is I would, why do I like it? Let me stop for a second. Why do I like is mega typers legit? The reason why is because a lot of these new and upcoming websites that, that pay people for things, a lot of people Google it and say, is it legit? Now, why is there not a lot of search volume? Again, it could be new. It, this could be an, a new topic. I'll, and sometimes being new and first and early has its advantages. So I won't rule out something just because it's got a low search volume, especially if I think it ties into my cluster. So my, my topic is on making money online. Then I talk about how to make money online. In this particular case, we're doing how to make money with CAPTCHAs. So that little cluster, if I talk about those platforms and the resources and tools, could rank and generate some income. So I can either write the blog myself, okay? And it could look something like this. Watch this. We go over to Sidebar or Cider, and I'm gonna say, write an article, colon, is mega typers legit? Okay? Now, it's gonna start, it's gonna write us an article, a very basic article that we can build on. Now, if you're using Jasper or Surfer or Phrase or any of those, you can write it in any of those tools. This is just a quick example, but watch this. If I click compare answer from the web, now it's going to go out and scour the web and it's going to answer the question now, including links to other people's articles about it that I might want to go dive into. Okay. So it's basically saying there's mixed opinions. I might want to go play with those a little bit. Or I can also go over to my AI tool. So in my particular case, I use Surfer SEO and I'm going to go to content editor and I'm going to type in the phrase is mega typers legit. Okay. Tells me there's not a lot of search volume for it. I still want to do it because if I'm going to send people off my medium blog to a third party page, maybe it's better to have my own article that they click through and link because that's ad revenue, that's traffic to my website, it's potential rankings. So anytime it fits my niche, it makes more sense potentially to have my own article on there. Okay. Especially if it's a low competition article. So is mega typer legit? And then watch this. I am not going to, I'm not going to write with AI yet. I'm going to click create with one CE credit. Here's why I do this. So this particular tool is called Surfer SEO. And I use it for two things. I use it to, it goes out and it pulls in all the competition for that keyword online on page one of Google. Then it tells me the approximate word count I'm going to need to rank, meaning how deep do I need to cover that topic? Okay. Oftentimes it's three to 4,000 words. Something like this should never be. It's, it's lower competition. It doesn't have a lot of search volume. I can't imagine it's going to be massive word count. So then I might say, well, if it's under a thousand words, I'll write the article myself. If it's over a thousand words, I'll go ahead and let Surfer us, the AI tool, write it for me. This tool will sometimes write an 8,000 word article for the same price as it will for 20 words. Okay. So again, the average is about 3,000 words I'm finding with this tool based on the suggestions, but it has an AI writer built in. So you pay for this subscription for the SEO analysis, but then you also pay for the article to have it written somewhere in the ballpark of $25 and down, depending on the packages you buy. Sometimes they have sale, sell, sales. So when they have sales, I will bulk up. Like I think I ordered a hundred articles on their last sale so that I had them all sitting in here bulk ordered, but you could do one article for like $29 and test it. Okay. But watch how this works. 
So I'm going to click, is Megatypers legit? And this is what the, the editor looks like when it opens. Okay. So, oh, wow. So it's still saying 2,000 words. 1,934 to 2,000 to 2,224 words. Okay. Tells you the approximate number of headings, paragraphs, images. And then it gives you these NLP keywords that should be covered in the article. So if you want to sit and write this all out, or you want to paste a chat GPT article in here, or you want to feed these keywords to chat GPT and have it write you an article, there's all kinds of ways you can do that. I'm going to tell you for me, I'm at the point now where I order the article because I'm testing AI completely, but then I'll edit it or, you know, potentially depending on what it is. And if I'm trying to move fast, one blog like we're writing on medium could turn into five to 10 articles that I get inspired to write and I don't have a staff. So for me, it's easier to throw them into surfer SEO, let it write the articles and give them back to me. And then I keep an eye. I, I, I track them all in SEM rush to see what's ranking, what's not ranking, what rose fast and then fell, maybe what I need to go create some backlinks to, but at least I know it's optimized for the search engines. Okay. It doesn't mean it's ideal for humans without going over it because I might need to include links. I might want to put in stats. I might want to put in images and videos and quotes. Okay. But in this particular case, I do want this to write the article. It does fit what I'm doing right now. So I'm going to go to write with Surfer AI, and then this box is going to open. And it's going to say, what type of article are you writing? And I'm going to say a blog post, a product roundup, or a single product review. Okay. I am not going to let this be a review. The reason for that is with Google's helpful content updates, they are looking for personal experience. They can sniff out these fake reviews. So if you have not reviewed the product, I would not let an AI tool act like you did. That's just my opinion. You do what you want. I want to, I want to write an informational post about the software, but not make it a review. Okay. That doesn't mean the surfer might not turn it into a review because every now and then it, it'll, it'll scan the top 10 results and it'll, it'll think it needs to be a review and it might still write it that way. But that's what the outline's for. So watch this. So we blog post, then a tone of voice. I'm hoping they will soon let us put in a choice tone of voice. I, I wish I could put in Seth Godin. Can't do it yet. So I will usually put in something like conversational, but you could leave it, leave it auto SERP based. It's going to be, it's going to be based on whatever else it's seeing on the search engine already. That's fine. And then it's going to pull in the organic competitors. You can change those. You can leave them. I suggest you leave them unless you really know what you're doing. You can boost AI content detection. If you click that though, it, you might, it, it might misspell some words. It puts some things in there to, to try to cheat the AI detection system. As far as I can tell, Google doesn't care that you're writing with AI. In fact, they've changed their spam uh, terms. It used to say you couldn't write with AI. And now it says, it used to say written by humans for humans. Now it just says written for humans. So it, Google's in the AI game. We all believe most of us at this point that AI content is, is okay. It doesn't need, it's not a bad thing if your website has AI content, but still optimizing it for humans is ideal. So I do not click boost AI detection. Then I'm going to click create outline. Now it's going to say, sit tight. We're using AI to generate your article outline. I'm going to come back to this. I'm going to go back to medium. Now I'm going to keep writing while this is doing its thing. Okay. You see how I'm going back and forth. I'm getting, I'm finishing this, but I'm getting inspiration. I hop over, I do my research, decide if I want to order an art article. Now while I'm sitting here doing this surfers working for me, like I have an employee sitting there writing for me. I love that. Okay. So now we did mega typers. All right. Now we can verify some of this information here too. So watch this. I'm going to do this and I'm going to go to the sidebar and I'm going to say verify this info. What I wanted to do is go out there and show me where it's, where that money, where, where it says on mine, you can earn around 50 cents to 150. Well, how do I know that? Google's going to want to see a link or a reference of some sort that would prove that potentially. So it says here, according to the information found on the Megatypers website, the average rate per CAPTCHA is 45 cents for every thousand images typed. However, this rate may vary depending on the server load and demand. The website also offers bonus rates for typing at certain hours and days. I like that. I'm going to add that. I think that's valuable to my user. 
So I'm just going to add that little bit right there. Okay. Now, again, because I'm writing an article now using Surfer, I'm, I don't necessarily have to send them to the Mega Typers website. I'm going to send them to my blog and then my blog will send them to the Mega Typers website. It's just a little in between. So I'll still have that stat verified, but it'll go to my blog and it'll be verified there. I hope that makes sense. If not, let me know. Now I might pop over and check on Surfer while we're doing this. So now Surfer has created our outline. Okay. So while we were doing that, it was working in the background. So is Mega Typers legit an in-depth review in 2023? I'm going to take out the year. This is tricky. Most of the Surfer blogs will include a year. And I think that's valuable. But I'm now getting towards the end of 2023. And I have created hundreds of AI written blogs now, most of them with a year in it. And I'm going to have to go back in there and change all those years to 2024. So not always a great idea to put that year in there ahead of time because you will need to go in and change them. So is Mega Typers legit an in-depth review? And then understanding, CAPTCHA, how Mega Typer, how they operate. Now, I said an in-depth review, but I didn't, it's not my review. Uh, I'm not giving a personal experience review. It's just a review of the product and all the things it offers. But if you don't want to use the re review, you can get rid of that all together. Now watch, we can improve this title again. Come over here. Improve this title. Don't use the word review. Maybe we don't want to use the word review. Although keywords tell us we should use the word review. Okay, so this, this changed it to a comprehensive analysis. Okay, so you could say, give me three more ideas and it'll give you a few more. Unveiling the truth about mega typers, a detailed investigation. Ooh, that sounds good. But you know what you don't want to lose? You don't want to lose your is mega typers legit? So I would have to say, um, do it again and keep is mega typers legit in the sentence. Okay, there you go. Oh, they, it didn't do it. Okay, is Mega Typers legit or scam? A comprehensive review of the platform's trustworthiness. Ooh, I like that one. It won't let me copy it. Let me see if I can copy it down here. There we go. Okay, now I'm going to take it. Is I like that. I'm going to use that one. And I'm just going to paste it right there. So you can go through this outline and you can add, change. You can put in stats you want it to use, things like that. But if it's fine... You, these are all the headings and subheadings like you would see in a normal outline. If you like it the way it is, and remember, it pulled these from the other competing blogs. So it knows that these topics should be covered. Now here it says you can customize the content of each section by clicking this icon. Okay, so here you can add in custom knowledge, facts, expertise, URLs for it to use when writing the article. But you do not have to. You can also click the X to delete something that you don't want to be in this article. So you have some power over this right out of the gate, changing this outline to fit what you want it to write about. Okay. Then we're going to click let's write. And in my experience, I want to say it's about 20, let's just say 20 minutes to an hour. I haven't timed it exactly. This article will be done. So I usually go back over and work on, keep working on my medium article and while that's running, we can actually get out of there, go back to the list, and we can keep going with more research, okay? So next one we go to is Captcha Genie. I'm not, for the sake of time, I'm not going to keep going, but I would do the same things to these. I would go look up Captcha Genie. I'd find the link. I'm going to check if I want to write an article, and I'm going to get those rolling. Got it? Okay. Now, resources needed. Internet connection, computer or smartphone, conclusion. You want to keep those in there. You can keep them in there. If you think that's silly, you can get rid of it. I'm going to make that a subheading. Resources needed. That one doesn't need to be a subheading. Oh, all right. Let me put a space in there. Sometimes you got to put a space to get it to not pull the ones underneath. All right. There we go. Okay. Internet connection, computer, smartphone. And I sometimes I'll make these like bold just to make them kind of pop. So I, I do a little bit of, of a general user optimization that I think it would make it more appealing for them when I'm writing the article. So again, I'm not, this isn't super fast, 
but it's valuable, right? Okay, so then we have sign up and get started. And what does it say? Examples, fill out your profile, complete a few sample captures. Um, the resource needed would be an email address. Now let's see what it would give us if we say elaborate on this. Elaborate. Remember, think like a beginner. It's saying fill out your profile on what? What is it saying? Fill out your profile. So this is saying this one goes to right to mega typers. Fill out, all right, let's see. Complete a, complete a few sample captures. I'm going to say when using a CAPTCHA platform to get paid, how does one create a few sample CAPTCHAs? I just kind of want to see. I'm a beginner, right? What does that mean? So now it's saying you will be presented. Yeah, here, here we go. Okay, hold on. All right, here we go. To complete the sample captures, you'll be presented with a series of images containing distorted characters or numbers. Your task is to type the correct characters or numbers into a text box provided. The platform will evaluate your accuracy based on how many captions you solve correctly. The purpose of completing sample captures is to demonstrate your ability to accurately solve captures and ensure that you are capable of performing the task. Um, yada, yada. Okay, I like it. So if it's good to go, you're going to click copy. And I am going to not worry about, yeah, okay. And then I'm going to paste this in here. Okay, so again, that's going to be more valuable. It's going to give them better examples. Now, as I'm going through this, I might include some images. I might go over and, and take a picture of a CAPTCHA. Or I can click this little plus sign if you're using Medium. And I'm going to click on this button here, and I'm going to type in CAPTCHA. And it'll go pull some copyright-free images that you could use. You could put something in there. Or alternatively, my favorite platform for images is Canva. So I might go to Canva, pick the size I want to use. And let's just say I'm going to go with a standard like Facebook size here. And I'm going to type CAPTCHA. Oh, I'm in magic design. That's okay. So this is doing AI right now. Oh, I kind of like that one, that CAPTCHA right there. So I could do this. I think that one was AI generated, right? Not 100% sure. So I could also go over to Elements, type in CAPTCHA, and go to Photos. Here you go, right? So any cap, anything you want, put it in there. CAPTCHA, I'm not a robot. I'm going to go to Share, Download, Download as a JPEG, and then I'm going to save this as a keyword, something like Get Paid to type CAPTCHAs. I'm going to put that in my pictures, save. Then I'm going to go back over to Medium and I can just find where I just had that picture and drag it in to wherever I want it. Okay, and you could use AI to create those photos if you don't want to use, um, and Canva has that built in as well. So you could be using Midjourney, you could be using Canva, you could be using uh, Jasper, you're using whatever you want to create your images. That's just an example there. Okay. All right. Now, here's another thing I, I really watch for is where are there opportunities where I could put a link back to my own website. So here it says, when using a CAPTCHA platform to get paid, you typically do not create sample CAPTCHAs yourself. Instead, the platform provides you with a set of sample CAPTCHAs to solve. These sample CAPTCHAs are designed to access your typing accuracy and ensure you can accurately solve CAPTCHAs before you start earning money. Okay, sorry, had a text, had to pause. Okay, so down here, we're gonna say, we're looking for ways to link back to our website. So something that might, if, if it says something about making money online, for example, and I know that my website has blogs about earning money or making money online. That could trigger me as I'm starting to go through, like not trigger, but it'll, it'll make me think, okay, I think I have a blog about that. Now, one of the ways, this is this is another way I use that SEMrush tool, okay? I'll go over here and I'll type in my website, okay? You can go to the home, Go actually, I'm gonna go to the homepage and I'm gonna type in my website. Then I'm going to go down to this list of keywords, which are right here. I'm going to click view details. 
Now I can search all the keywords that I rank for on my website. If I have a newer search term, it may not be ranking yet. I have a newer article, it may not be ranking yet. I might have to just go pull that from the blog. But my first step always is I want to link to the page that's already ranking for that keyword. Okay, I try to have one page ranking with one target main keyword and I want that page to rank for that keyword. So I'm gonna send as many, create as many backlinks as I can to that page with that keyword. So let me type in money, right? So make money, earning money. What, what website do I have that's about making money? So how to get money from DoorDash, make money legit, how to get money legit. Okay, but then I look at the URL, that goes to inbox dollars. That's not what I want. So how much YouTubers make is not right. Make money watching videos is not right. Um, looking, digital courses. Okay, so I really don't yet have a great article that's about making money online. Inspirational opportunity. I'm gonna go over to my website in a new tab. I'm typing lauriballon.com and I'm gonna type in make money online. Do I have an article about making money online? So I could look for make money online or making money online. Pet blogging, how to become a product review, 40 proven ways to make money online. Okay, let me look at that. I'm gonna check if this article is ranking. I'm gonna take that URL. And I know this, I know we have so many learning opportunities right now I'm giving you like, but I'm going to go through the whole thing and then maybe I'll link out to some resources for you for each piece. I have courses on all this at balanacademy.com. You might be watching this inside the course. If not, that might help. Okay. So this, what this page is not really ranking well. So my next thing I go look at is when did I write it? So I'm going to go up here. Oops. Hold on. I'm going to have to just log in really quick. What we want to do is see when I actually wrote this. So what I'll do now is I'm gonna to go to edit the post. I wanna look at when I publish this article. If I published it in the last few months, it just may not be, it may have a ways to go. If I published it longer than a few months ago, there could be a problem. It's not a great article. I could do better. So here's what I'm looking at. It's well optimized, but I published this in February and it's not ranking and it's now September. That's too long. So I might need to go back to the drawing board or it's just too competitive of a topic. So how do I know which? First thing I'm gonna go do is I'm gonna go over to Surfer and I wanna see if I already covered this topic. Did I have Surfer write it? So right here, I'm just gonna put make money. I'm looking to see if, I've, if I wrote that article with Surfer. Okay, how to make money on Pinterest, how to make money from YouTube Shorts. Um, Okay, let me try make money online because that's the target keyword. No, so I did not create a real good comprehensive article with Surfer. I probably wrote it myself or wrote it with ChatGPT. And I have to tell you, in most cases, the AI tool does a better job than I do. <laughs> People always say, write the articles yourself. It's gonna be better if you write it yourself. I don't agree with that necessarily. I can write passionately, but I don't necessarily know all the pieces to cover. That's where a lot of these AI tools come in. And the way they put sentence structure together is cleaner and, and more user-friendly. So I personally like it better. Now, I need to see how competitive this term is. So I'm going to go back over to SEMrush, go to the home screen, and I'm going to type in make money online. Now I'm looking to see how competitive it is. 100%. That is as hard as it can be. Max highest. So you're going to have to have a domain authority score probably in the 80s or 90s to rank for that. Now, is there something less competitive that we can target in that same umbrella? So I'm kind of looking, see where it goes. Oh my gosh, such a competitive niche. But here, how to make money online as a teenager, how to make money online legit is actually better. So we might want to create an article called how to make money online legit and still cover that topic, but that might give us more opportunities. Or I might just say for right now, this is going to be too competitive of a topic for me to cover a pillar post about it. But then I say to myself, even if it doesn't rank, 
if I want Google to look at my website as a make money online authority, don't I need to have a pillar post all about making money online? Well, I do have one. I have one. At least it's on there. So Google would see it. It's it's ranking for something, but it's not great. But I'm, now I'm kind of curious what Surfer would say. So I'm, I'm going to come up here, content editor, write yourself, make money online. Super competitive, super high search volume. Let's see how many words Surfer says it should be. Going back to my own article, which is right here, I can see that it is 9,140 words long. So there may not be a darn thing wrong with my article, although I definitely didn't optimize it with images, videos. It looks like I put something together, but I could go in there and do a lot more. I don't really have great outbound links in there to my other pages. So this gives me inspiration to work on. So I might put this on my Trello board or my to-do list that I need to go in and really work on my make money pillar post with inbound links and outbound links, that whole topic cluster, or maybe I wanna have it rewritten. So we come back over here to Surfer. Let's see what it suggests. So it's it's saying only 5,000 words, okay? So maybe I diluted it. Maybe I put a bunch of stuff in there that really didn't belong in there. So, you know, they're talking about, make, about surveys, being a virtual assistant, online tutor, digital products, okay? Where I kind of went into more of a pillar post leading out to all of my other links, all of those other links. So this would be a choice. I'm not going to make a choice right at this moment because what I'm thinking already is it's pro I already have a blog post. I like that it's a pillar post now that can link out to all those other articles more in a topic cluster, but I should go in and make sure I've covered all these topics, right? So what I could do is I could paste my article in here now and create a score for how well did that article cover what Google thinks we need to cover. So it would look something like this. If I go over to here, I'm going to go all the way down to the bottom. I'm going to do a quick, let's do a quick, don't look at all my extras. These are links that will confuse you right now. We'll save that for another video. Okay, then I'm going to go up here and I'm just going to click here and I'm going to go all the way up. I'm going to get most of it, 32, 39, 40, 50. Okay, and then once you have most of it, I'm just going to click copy. I'm going to come over to Surfer. You can copy the whole thing in there. And I'm, if I do the control, all it pulls in a bunch of other stuff. So that's why I don't do it that way. Okay, now I pull it in. So let's see how well I did. Okay, not bad. Not bad. It's basically, and if I'd have pulled it all in, it would have even been better. So 70 out of 100 score. Okay, but I there are some more things I could cover and it's possible there's some things in here I shouldn't even put in here that I could pull out like this one understanding pay-per-click management that that doesn't need to all be in there that's too fancy I could cut those lists down shrink it down so I have to decide do I want to optimize it myself or them but that's how I go about this okay but since this page is already created I'm, I'm going to update this page. I'm not going to create a new one. Even if I write a new article, I'll take out that content, put in a new article on the same page. So this .com, the URL won't change. Ways to make money online. The target keyword is make money online. I'm not going to change that. So I am going to link that on my Medium article. So right here where it says start earning money, I might just click that link and paste it right there. Now I have a link back to my website, okay? And you can see, if I go over here to one of my analytic platforms I use, Clicky, kind of at a glance, you can see today down here, here's my top traffic. Google's always number one. It doesn't show up uh, over here on links. So Pinterest is sending traffic. Medium is sending traffic. YouTube, then Medium again, LinkedIn, and then these are some backlinks, but you can see that traffic coming over from Medium. So this is a this is a that's proof of why I do that. Okay, so I will go through this blog after I've written it. Usually that's the last step. I go in, I add an image. 
So make money online, how to earn $75 every 30 minutes. We could go over to Canva and create an image, or we can put in an image um, right here, but Medium's going to want an image. So I'm gonna say something like money, okay? And then, cause it's make $75 online. So you can keep scrolling through until you find one that you like and you could paste that in there. Or it could be a CAPTCHA, or it could be, an, you could create an AI art, whatever you want, that's going to be like the cover of that blog post, okay? Then we go in, we add our video, we go in and create the links that are gonna go back, uh, we get inspired to create other articles, right? And then we're, you clean up each piece and you elaborate. I've already showed you how to do that. So here it says automate the process, use the affiliate program to get others to solve CAPTCHAs for you, I'm going to have to definitely go elaborate on that because I don't know what that means. So each piece, I'm going to go elaborate. And if I don't understand the complete concept, I will go back to the script and find it. Okay. I'll find it up here. So right here where it says, use the affiliate program. Where did he mention affiliate program? So I'm going to do a command F and I'm going to say affiliate program. Okay. Here's where he mentions it. So he says, um, okay. Scroll down, you're gonna see this right here, it's called affiliate program. Now you're gonna going to click on that and that's gonna take you to the site where basically it's the same site, but it's just a different page. Okay, so then it talks all about getting other people. So I, I might have to go watch that clip of the video or wherever that starts, I could do something like this, take some of that and say, explain this and see what ChatGPT can do with it. Okay, there you go. So if it's got an affiliate for every person you refer to the site who starts solving CAPTCHAs, you will earn 10% of their earnings. For example, if they earn 1,000, you will earn $100, right? So that's that should be part of this blog. You're making money typing CAPTCHAs, but you're also making money sending them to the affiliate program to make money doing CAPTCHAs. CAPTCHAs. So I'm going to elaborate on that. I'm going to spell that out. Okay. Then the frequently asked questions, that's up to you. You want to leave that in there. You want to take it out if it makes sense to do so. And then my profile here, Lori Ballon is a renowned content creator who specializes in creating educational, inspirational content with a knack for breaking down complex topics into easy to understand formats. Lori has helped countless individuals turn their passions into profits. If you don't have a large digital footprint, you might have to feed it information. Okay, so you could do something like this. Create a bio for Mary Smith, um, beauty influencer, experienced in makeup for mature skin. Here you go. Look at this bio. Mary Smith's a renowned beauty influencer. Her approach to makeup is all about yada yada. Now you'll revise that, change that. You'll tell it to take things out. Or if it says you've been in the industry for 10 years, you've been in for one year, you can have it change it. Once you are you have a larger digital footprint, ChatGPT will be able to go out and bring in information about you. So the more places you use a bio, the better, okay? And then final thoughts. So there you have it, a complete guide to making money by typing CAPTCHAs, resources. I can, If I wanna put a summary here, also, I always put an affiliate disclosure. So usually I put it under the video, somewhere in that vicinity, and I'm gonna put it right here, or by the takeaways, I'm gonna put right here, where are the takeaways? Oh, I don't have the takeaways on this one. Okay, sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. So under here, anywhere, before I start pasting in affiliate links, I'm gonna put in a disclosure that says, this article contains affiliate links that may benefit me with no additional cost to you. That must be in every article if you're using affiliate links. If you're not using affiliate links, it doesn't need to be in there. The other thing I personally like to do, if I'm writing a blog about making money, I'm gonna put in a disclaimer. Write a disclaimer that these earnings are not typical. It's important to not make something, make grandiose claims or make anything sound too simple. Um, so this one is really long. So I'm going to say, make it shorter. Okay. Write a short disclaimer about earnings not being typical. I need to put that in the chat GPT prompt in the future. So then, okay. 
Um, anyway, so you can shrink that down. You can make that longer. Disclaimer, earnings mentioned in relation to CAPTCHA platforms are not typical and may vary from individual to individual. The income you can generate from solving CAPTCHAs, you don't even have to put that. I could just put the income you can generate from solving CAPTCHAs depends on various factors, including your typing speed, accuracy, availability of CAPTCHAs, and the specific platforms platform rates. That's probably good enough. I want to put something in there so that they understand that it can vary, right? Because there is no one size fits all with making money online. So I'm going to, I'm going to put that in there. So I think now that you got the idea, recapping, we're just taking a video, we're using it as inspiration to create a blog. Then we're using that blog to be inspired to create more blogs. We're using SEMrush for, to look up keyword difficulty and to track the performance of our Surfer SEO uh, AI written articles. And then we are using Surfer, Surfer SEO to write the articles for us potentially or tell us what needs to be in that article. We're creating backlinks to our own website. We're adding images, videos, graphs. We're making this as helpful as possible. The last thing we're doing after we add the disclaimers, we go in and we check, is there anywhere else we can add any more articles or backlinks, um, any more article backlinks to our own website, a backlink that goes to an article on our website. That'd be the last thing I go through and do after this is all finished. Then I publish it on Medium and I make money on that article on medium as part of the partner program but you don't have to do this on medium you can do this anywhere else facebook articles linkedin articles generate that traffic back but this is what i do all day long every day is create content like this i really hope you found this helpful i'm Lori ballen thank you so much for joining me today